all of a sudden panic starts to hit them. It doesn't even make sense. It's not even logical. Panic starts to hit them. They all start getting scared. They're just like, man, I'm really scared. Me too. What'd you do? What'd you do? Did you put something in my drink? Did you put something in my drink? I'm going to kill you, man. Yeah, I'm going to kill you. You snore a lot. You smell. Your mom smells. It's on! And all of a sudden, <laughs> these Philistines are going nuts on each other. They start stabbing each other. Panic gets sent from God, listen, throughout the entire Philistine army. I want us to back up. Why did that happen? I honestly believe this. I don't believe that God had on his calendar that day, at 3 o'clock today, I'm going to send panic throughout the Philistine army. 3 o'clock today, I'm going to cause some Philistines to just fall down and not be able to get up. I hope someone's there to stab them. I honestly believe this. I believe that God began to act on Jonathan's behalf when Jonathan got filled with faith and started to step out and believe God and begin to take a risk and do something that might seem crazy in the eyes of other people. But when he was willing to risk and walk out and start to take on the enemy, he said to his armor bearer, let's go kick the bee's nest. Let's go pick a fight and see what happens. And God was sitting in heaven going, wait a sec. I thought everybody was just chilling out under the pomegranate tree. Finally, someone who believes that I actually want them to win. I believe this generation needs to start to get filled with faith that comes from God. Start to actually believe God wants you to win. Start to actually believe that God might actually use your life to do some things that are way off the grid of normal. Way off the grid of what anyone else maybe in your lifetime or your family or your church or whatever has ever experienced. But just being willing to step out in faith and take God at his word. The Bible says that faith is not a mindset. Listen to me. The book of James says, faith, that it doesn't have action with it. James doesn't know what else to call it. So he's like, okay, you have faith, but if it doesn't have action, he's like, that kind of faith can't save you. Listen up. That kind of faith can't save you. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have a faith that does nothing. I don't want to have a faith that just makes me lazy and I'll just sit around underneath a pomegranate tree and just go, man, I'm glad I got my get out of hell free pass. I'm glad I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. I have no intention of living for him. I'm just going to kind of do my thing. I don't want a faith like that. There's a generation around us that deserves an encounter with God. I'm going to ask everyone to please just stop talking with one another. Listen to me, serious as a heart attack. There's a generation around us that needs an encounter with God. And when Jonathan and his armor bearer were willing, just one day they woke up and they were tired of sitting under the pomegranate tree. They were tired of just taking it easy. Something stirred in Jonathan's heart. And he just, I don't know if it started out like he was venting. He's like, you know what? Let's just go find some Philistines. And his armor bearer, I don't know if, if he was really thinking, yeah, let's do it. Or if he was just shooting his mouth off. He's like, yeah, I, let's do it, man. Whatever. Like, whatever's in your heart, I'm with you. All of a sudden, faith gets stirred. They start presenting themselves and saying, hey, we're over here. The Philistines say, come on up here. We'll teach you a lesson. By the time Jonathan gets to the top of the hill, he's so filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that, listen, warriors start falling in front of him. His armor bearer starts stabbing them. Then, listen, there is panic sent by God, and the Philistine army literally starts to implode. Why is this story in the Bible? So that we can go, wow, that is so cool that God did that way back then, and I'm so happy to know that God did something awesome way back then. 
Listen to me. The story is in Scripture because it's your inheritance. This is the kind of stuff God does with young men and young will, women who are willing to take a risk and step out in faith and believe God to do something amazing through their life and to shake down the kingdom of hell and release the kingdom of God and see the power of God on display, not just in church, not just under the pomegranate tree, not just in your youth group, but listen, in the halls of your high school and in, the, in, the, in your family room and everywhere you go in your part-time job, seeing the power of God at work wherever you go in Jesus name for this purpose the Son of God is manifest in your life Jesus is in your life to destroy the devil's work sometimes we pray things we say God I would love for you to do the things like you did in scripture. We, we read Bible stories and we, we just, we look at what God does and we say, God, do that. And we'll take a scripture, we'll pull it and we'll go, God, please come and heal our land. How many want to see God heal the nation of Canada? I want to see God heal this nation. I want to see God raise up this nation as a land of healing, that the anointing of healing would flow from this land. It's our prophetic destiny. I want to see it happen. But we can say, oh God, please come heal our land. And I honestly believe that sometimes God's going, um, yeah, the first part of that is actually, I'll, I'll come heal your land if you'll turn from your wicked ways. Seek my face, humble yourself, and pray. 